Good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome. Uh, my name is David Tolley, and on behalf of all of our project members, I'll be presenting our work on Empower, which is haptic interfaces for deafblind individuals to interact, communicate, and entertain. Uh, so starting with the issue, for deafblind individuals, the absence of visual and auditory information can make everyday tasks that we take for granted such as communication, independent navigation, or supported education, uh, extremely challenging. And it's this lack of meaningful interaction with the world around them uh, that can lead many deafblind individuals to unfortunately suffer with both severe mental and social issues as well. So, uh, what forms of communication can deafblind individuals utilize? For the deafblind, the concept of sensory substitution can be used to present information from different modalities in a form where it can be received through their tactile sensory channels. So as is being demonstrated on the screen at the moment, a commonly utilized form of tactile feedback is finger braille. Uh, th this was uh, originally created in Japan and it's a type of tactile communication where the sender dots braille code on the fingers of the receiver using the thumb, the index, the middle finger, and also the ring finger on each hand. Uh, so finger braille is predominantly uh, favored for assisting deafblind communication because of both it, the speed and accuracy with which it can be used. Um, however, as many people aren't familiar with uh, finger braille, most deafblind individuals do rely quite heavily on some form of interpreter to communicate with others. And of course, this requires someone to be present who has a very good understanding of finger braille, but also due to this, it can be very time intensive for the caregivers and also very cost intensive for the deafblind individuals as well. So really with regard to developments in the current assistive tools for deafblind people, uh, the majority of existing projects have been focusing on creating some form or different types of tactile displays that employ actuation methods to provide haptic feedback on the deafblind person's fingers or on their hand or also on their wrist as well. Uh, and as finger braille itself is already an established form of communication, there are several projects such as the first two that you can see on the screen uh, that have been developed specifically for presenting finger braille language to the users. But alternatively, there are other devices such as the mobile lawn glove, which is shown on the right on the screen, uh, which covers the user's entire hand. Now here, one of the main challenges with using a glove-based system is that actually it gets in the way of other actions uh, that we use our hands for day to day. For example, picking up objects or also feeling for textures as well, which is very important. Um, so really as an alternative to these existing approaches, we've been developing an assisted platform to enable effective communication with and also between uh, deafblind people, blind, deaf, and also vocally impaired individuals as well. And the, the platform itself uh, comprises of a tactile feedback interface that comes in two forms. So firstly, on the left, you'll see the desktop version. And on the, sorry, in the center of the screen, you'll also see the wearable version. And both of these two forms, the desktop and the wearable hardware interfaces, contain a set of eight input and output points, um, which both generate and also detect vibrotactile events on the user's fingertips. And by using this type of configuration, these systems can actually handle both six and eight dot braille patterns. Um, and really, if you'd like to know a lot more about the technical implementation of these systems, please do refer to the paper for this. Uh, but additionally, both of these hardware interfaces do link to a partnering mobile app, which you can see on the right of the screen, uh, and that's through a wireless Bluetooth connection. So if we look at this high-level system overview uh, of the Empower platform, uh, this partnering mobile application really is acting as a bridge between the tactile interactions of the hardware interfaces and also other modalities of communication and different forms of content as well. So in a sense, what it's doing is, the app is doing, is trying to mirror the functionality of a human interpreter. So by developing a mobile, mobile application like this, actually um, we're trying to integrate the hardware interfaces with the digital supported functionalities, such as the ones that you can see on the right of the screen. And this means that the Empower system can actually perform real-time conversions between a range of different stimuli or modalities of stimuli. So this is namely uh, between Braille, 
text, uh, speech, and also image content as well. So once we created this prototype, we actually had a few different questions that we wanted to address. So firstly is how well can users perceive tactile stimulation from the devices? And secondly, what are first time users experiences with these devices? And for the sake of time, I'm actually gonna be providing only a summary of our findings here. But again, if you'd like to see more details, please do um, look at the paper for how we did the testing. So addressing the first question, uh, here we actually conducted a stimuli perception evaluation, which was with a range of different uh, tactile patterns from the devices. And what we found here was that actually in general people and users were able to distinguish between the different stimuli. But as the number of fingers being actuated did increase, we actually found that uh, users did find it much more challenging to accurately detect these patterns. Uh, additionally, some actuation patterns did tend to trigger what were known as phantom sensations, which is where the users perceived um, vibrous tactile stimulation in a finger which wasn't actually being actuated. So that's something that we definitely like to address more in future research. Um, but aside from this, actually the testing did also enable us to identify a few different optimal time settings, such as uh, actuation durations and frequency of actuations. Um, so we can look towards uh, actually generating patterns that can be much more easily understood. So secondly, um, to address the second question, what are first time users experiences with the devices? Uh, for this, we actually conducted an open usability session with a small group of users who suffer from different levels of combined visual and auditory impairments. So these sessions were really, really useful for um, gathering extremely insightful um, views on the devices and also ways that we can improve them in the future. And one of the predominant uh, proposals by users was the addition of haptic finger guides so that when the users are using these interfaces, these guides can actually uh, show them the correct placement of their hands. Um, so when they're using, they can actually uh, guide themselves to the actuation points correctly. Uh, secondly, there was also the addition of a feature which um, can help users reconfirm the communications that they're sending from the devices to the mobile app. So when they send uh, a message from the device, they'd like the ability to confirm that they've sent the correct message uh, before moving on to the next part of the correspondence. Uh, aside from this, in general, these sessions did also highlight that uh, the users who did find the system the most accessible were those with the greatest level of prior knowledge of Braille before the testing. So uh, what this really points to is in the future kind of asking questions about what is the learning curve with regards to these types of devices and how does that change based on how much prior knowledge of tactile languages the user has before using it. So definitely another point that we'd like to look at in the future. Um, but really in this work, we've uh, firstly, we've developed a novel assistive communication platform and also through our very initial testing that we've just uh, discussed, we've begun to identify some critical improvements for future iterations of the system. However, uh, in parallel with this, actually it's very important that we also consider within what context an assisted platform such as Empower uh, can be utilized in the future. So as is illustrated here, and also is discussed in more detail in the paper, we do believe that there are many scenarios in which this type of technology can actually provide some significant benefits. Um, obviously, aside from the predominant application of improving direct communication with others, there's actually the potential for sensory impaired users to firstly more readily access external information, but also access much more digital content as well. And we feel that this is something that may provide a host of new opportunities to leverage this technology in the future. So with that, I will end this very brief introduction to our work and say thank you for your attention. Uh, please do view the paper if you would like to see more details and also please do post any questions that you may have. Um, but with that, thank you very much.